Yes! That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. Show me how it's done. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I'm at the nursery today because I have so much to catch you guys up on. It has been probably six weeks of me collecting videos of tidbits of things that we're doing and you might see it looks a little different in here. I gave you guys a little bit of a preview the other day. We've been painting, we've been doing things. Greenhouse number one looks like a totally different space. It's not complete yet, but I want to catch you guys up on how things are going. It's a complete construction zone here. So don't mind our mess, we're under renovation. <laughs> the last time you guys were in greenhouse number one, we were about halfway done painting the cinder blocks along the wall, and I was in the process of moving 20 tons of crushed stone around. And let me tell you, it took a long time to do all of those things. I'm gonna show you guys some clips of things that have been going on over the past six weeks and I'm probably gonna just voice over and tell you guys what's happening. There will be some clips of me from the actual day because I would pull the camera up and I'd talk to the camera like I normally do, but I haven't gotten a chance to use those clips. So here are some sights and sounds of the past six weeks here at the Boone Street Nursery. I just went through with this great stuff, bro just on some of the larger cracks just to make sure there's no air movement from inside and outside most of these are superficial but some of them were a little bit bigger so we just did a couple of them and this is a sandable paintable stainable foam insulation and uh, we used it when we did some work on the outside as well yes that's exactly what i wanted to have happen yeah okay now we just have to vacuum it and uh, paint it. Let's see. Woo! I definitely felt like Thor with the hammer here, not gonna lie. But let's take a quick look back at what greenhouse number one looked like when we first moved in here at the end of the summertime. And don't be fooled. Don't be visually tricked by the flowers on the tables. The flowers and plants are always gonna look beautiful. Look at the structure of these images. And look at the floor, the floor itself, and all of this piping that was going through, it was a little on the low side and customers would come in and they'd have to duck and hit, they would hit their heads. And there was some stuff, you know, just in the way. So one of our first things that we tackled was removing the pipes. And that took a couple of days. Brad bought one of these special saws, a band saw, I believe it's called. And we spent a couple of days removing the pipe. This was very heavy pipe and it was filled with rust just from years and years and years and years of sitting. Um, so you can see right here how low the pipes are where Brad can't even stand up straight in there. And that was the case with a lot of the customers. So one of the first things, like I said, was to get rid of this pipe. And then we turned our attention to the tables themselves. They also needed to go. We removed the tabletops first, which revealed even more piping underneath. So we it took us a couple of months, but we really ended up cleaning it all out. Now we were worried a little bit about structure. So you can see the guys brainstorming here. We decided to build new beams and install new beams so that the structure, when in the winter time had snow on the roof, there would not be any concern about the weight of the snow basically collapsing this structure. So we got these enormous beams and they were installed properly by my husband, my cousin, and a couple of our friends. And so now these beams are what is holding the entire structure up, especially in the winter time. And then we turned our attention to the floor. Now the floor here is multiple levels of concrete. Um, I've twisted my ankle in here and I knew it was gonna be a problem when it came to customers. So I wanted to have a floor that was level and something that people wouldn't be afraid to walk on. I consulted with a couple of other people in the business and they told me that crushed stone would be best for not only my back from being on it all day long, but also it would be great for drainage and it's also customer friendly and it's pretty inexpensive. It cost me about $500 to have 20 
20 tons of crushed stone. And then Brad had a genius idea of just lifting up the poly and uh, dumping it in with the tractor bucket. It took a little bit of time to spread the stone around. And during that time, my mom came up and along with my aunt and got a lot of the stones painted. So there are freshly painted cinder blocks in there. We were also able to spray the algae and make sure that it wasn't going to come back. So my father-in-law brought over a wheelbarrow and we were able to get the majority of the stone moved around. And then what we didn't finish, he and I, that day, I ended up finishing on my own over the next week or so. <laughs> I was so excited that we were getting stuff done. Hi, flower friends. I'm at the nursery today. I am shoveling stone and my cousin Michael showed up. He is going to work on the front wall of greenhouse number one. I wanted greenhouse one to have a finished look on the inside as well as the outside. We are going to be putting up some wood. We had planned, we talked about staining that before Michael put it up, but Michael had some free time today, so he's here. And it's not as simple as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a simple project to just put the wood up on the wall. There are beams in the wall that are set too far forward. There are beams that are set too far back. So there is no flush environment to put the wood up on. So he is adding two by fours and pieces of wood to make a flush face. So then he can add all of the wood to the wall the way we want it to go. Okay, so Michael and I have been talking. And I'm thinking we wanna close off the greenhouse. Like we wanna maybe make that, when I say that, I mean that space. I'm thinking about putting a door there and closing that in um, just because I want this space to retain the heat as best as possible. Michael is cutting the first piece of wood. He wants to get it up. He wants to see how it's gonna look. Just using this foam board for extra insulation and it's making a huge difference already. Plus he is I'm using the like spray insulation around the edges just for added protection. You can hear the saw. It's gonna go right there. started to kind of panic <sighs> because I as I'm like shoveling close to the sidewall I feel a lot of cold air come in a lot of cold air and I'm sitting here thinking all right the heat's on 50 degrees and all I feel is a steady stream it's cold today it's like 18 20 degrees <laughs> so I said to my cousin Michael I'm starting to panic I I don't know if I can get this building to hold temperature I'm feeling the air come in. There's spots in the poly where there's gaps in the wood. There's obviously there's tiny cracks in the cinder blocks. And so I had said that I filled in some of the larger cracks, but I really didn't plan on filling in those tiny, tiny cracks. But now I think we have to. Feeling the cold air come in and I'm just sitting here thinking, all right, my plant's gonna be on a, a bench right next to that wall. And while the heat is coming in, it's getting shot at with cold air. <sighs> Michael's much better at using that little gun than I am. I was using so much. So he's like, give it to me. And so he's he's filling in as many tiny gaps as he can. Um, so yeah, I'm nervous about the buildings themselves holding temperature. There's nothing else I can do now is we fill the gaps and we insulate as best we can, which is part of putting that front wall and we're gonna insulate the front of the wall. Show me how it's done. <laughs> Mine were so blobby and bad. Uh, I didn't know about the little adjusty tool. I probably wasted half a can on over spraying on a lot of spots, you know, the blobs over there. Yeah. Michael couldn't stand it that I was having all the fun with the stones and the rake. So before he left, he had to get a good 15 minutes in and he really was able to level it off a lot better than I could. I was just dumping it in places, but yeah, we had a productive day. Mama's back, back again. We're painting the second wall. She started, I only got about halfway with the clean. See how that's still all green. I still have to clean that. So she started halfway and she's making her way actually back 
towards that side of the greenhouse. Now, remember I was showing you guys that we used the orange stuff to fill the gaps. I was just trimming off, this is all just static cling, but this is all of the gaps that we tried to fill after realizing, well, I guess there was some draftiness coming in. Uh, now I'm just trimming that up with a little tool. Oh, I missed this spot right here. So I'll trim this up right here and then my mom will paint that as well. And there was a step in the front of the nursery that was really bothering me. Um, and I didn't want to have to put the stone all the way up to that level. So I asked my brother if he thinks that he could get rid of that stone. Well, sure enough, he had like a mini jackhammer in the truck. He works for my father. He's also an electrician. We have a family business. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Holy crap. Yay. Yeah, Shane. <laughs> Fabulous. Thanks, brother. Oh, I'm in the wheelbarrow. Yep, wheelbarrow time. Um, I honestly was so grateful for this. It was one of the biggest things for me. I didn't want to have to bring the stone up to that level in the front of the greenhouse. Having that stone removed meant I could have the stone four inches lower and not have anything exposed. Just right there. Oh my God. Oh yeah. I have a machine called a transit here that my father let me borrow. And this is the tool that I'm using to, oh, just about level the floors. I'm not worried about them being completely level, but I'd like it to be about the same around. So the level is, it might, it, it's kind of flashing, so I don't wanna get too close to it. The way that it works is it emits a laser basically around the room and you can use this machine to see where the laser is hitting it and then move this, not a machine, but this ruler around the room and see how off it is. Since January 10th, I was here day and I was here night and I was moving stone around to get it as level as possible. Aunt Jan did come up one day, help me finish painting the cinder blocks. And that brings us to this past weekend when it was all hands on deck. Pull it! <laughs> I've fallen already. Brad made this skid contraption to use <laughs> to help further level out the stone before we brought the tamper in. And then my father-in-law had a friend who has a tamper, so we borrowed it. And Brad and his father spent a couple hours just tamping the stone and wetting it down. And they went over it a few times and it's really solid and it looks great. So bright I'm like trying to put shade on the camera they don't work like that <laughs> so I picked out this coffee colored stain that kind of matches the rest of the wood and the kids are outside with friends um, so you can hear them shouting outside so what's the next step in here well the next step in here is to build the tables but my mom and I are also gonna be staining the beams that are in here and they're gonna be stained you see over in this corner there is a beautiful dark chocolate color. It's actually called fresh brewed coffee. Oh yes it is, of course it is. Because it matches the beams above. See all those beams above? So it's gonna have a flush look all the way through matching the old wood and the beams are gonna be the same color so it's just gonna be kind of like invisible. It's gonna blend in with all of the other wood that exists in here. Let's go get a closer look. My father-in-law has cut out all of the other pieces to finish this wall, but he took them down and he put them over in greenhouse number two so that we can stain them before we put them up. Because I tell you right now, staining wood that's already on the wall, it made a little bit of a mess. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end wall. It's gonna be the same hemlock. It's basically fresh cut hemlock from an Amish farm up the road. Same thing over there. Put that on the wall, the same coffee color to mimic so both ends are matching. Did we have enough stone? Obviously. <laughs> we used every single stone that we had. 
Could we have brought more in to level it out a little bit? Probably. If we actually leveled it out, the floor would be eight to 10 inches higher on this end of the building. So was Brad right when he said that we need more stone to level it out? Yeah, he was probably right. But when I said leveling it out, I just meant a flat surface so that nobody was tripping on stone. So did we have enough stone? Yes, I was right. I was right. This isn't a complete before and after, but this is what it looks like so far. Here's the before and here's what it looks like now. There's still a lot of work to do in here. The beams need to be stained, the end walls need to be finished, and we have to build the tables and get the rest of the stuff that doesn't belong in here, just get it out. The drip irrigation is also another project that we have to tackle, but I have to tell you, I don't think it's as big of a project as we originally thought, and I'll explain that more in an upcoming video. It still maintains the charm of the old Gothic wooden structure because for me, this greenhouse that's been here for decades and decades is a historic piece of our village. Okay, that does it for this update, guys. I'll have another update involving all the renovations in the retail shop coming up. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. In a Herculean effort, I have demolished all of the sides. And I feel like Thor right now with my magic hammer. Yeah. Shut up. You are Thor. I am Thor. Is your diaper dry? Because we detect leaks.